music isn't as intense as the New Year's Eve music. <laughs> it's relaxing. Dun, dun. Hot chocolate. <laughs> Sweet treats. Na na. Tangerine. Orange. Mellow. Yellow. Play pattern game with me, Alfred. Let's okay. play pattern game. Let's play all play pattern game. Okay. Marshmallow. Chocolate. Fire. Camp. Graham cracker. Snoopy. Pretty bird. Saturdays. Ooh. Cereal. S'mores. Sticky fingers. <laughs> Lucky charms. Green. Ooh. Stay puffed. Michelin tires. Char tire. Charge particles. <laughs> the jam. Show. Show time. Six minutes. Till show time. Six minutes. Mm -hmm. Six minutes to show time. Johnny September retired. Yeah, take a little creative break. But okay. both, both Matt and I are doing other things. Like this. Like this show? Correct. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And there's mint. Does that say mint? It sounds mint. It's good. Oh, I like that. It's 
sea salt caramel ones are really good too. wrote down a couple things like holiday blues or addictions besides king alcohol <laughs> like dark mint Six, six viewers to three. Coming to you all the way from Norfolk, Virginia, Go On Productions and Earprov.com presents Sober Saturdays with your host, John Regan Wharton. Hello, Saturday, 8 p.m. 2021. How weird. weird. Oh my gosh, like it's the future, Tiffany. I know. <laughs> oh, here with my two best friends, Alfred and Tiffany. Um, what is? This? Oh, more applause for our names. This is, we're we are friends in uh, the Norfolk, uh, Virginia, Virginia Beach uh, Peninsula area, and we all met at the Push Comedy Theater. And all of us like to write. All of us like to create on stage. Uh, we may even have a little bit of uh, musical talent. We may be able to sing and dance. Uh, but more importantly, all of us choose to live an alcohol-free lifestyle. And we have overcome different things in our lives that we like to talk about and share on this podcast. Um, this is maybe our fifth one. 
Yeah, maybe. Fourth or fifth. So we've been doing a sober Saturday, 8 p.m., the first Saturday of every month, uh, produced one by one of our uh, best friends, Matt Cole. He has earprov.com. And I just launched a Facebook page today, Sober Saturdays. Uh, so thank you to my friends and hosts, Tiffany and Alfred, for being here. Uh, Tiffany, what were you doing today before this? Today before this, I was working on a short film with some friends of mine in the community. That's cool. Yeah, doing a safe production. And it's it's been nice to be able to get back to doing film and theater and acting in general. Um, I've missed it. And here we are. Yeah, it's been it's been hard with uh, the season and then the pandemic and just like, how do we be safe? But it's good that there's still some opportunities out there. Yeah. Um, did you have a chill? New? How many New Year's has this been for you now without drinking? This would be the third. Okay. Yeah. Did you like uh, just go to bed or did you do anything? <laughs> I didn't really do much. Um, it's it's also been, it was also so, kind of sad, but uh, exactly a month since my cat died. Oh, yeah. So I wasn't really in a, in a mood. So what I did instead, I've decided to watch all of the Star Wars related things in order. That's awesome. So I finished. I finished Attack of the Clones and Enver and I started the Clone Wars. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Doing yeah. The same thing. I'm really yeah. <laughs> so you, you know who else can talk about cats in Star Wars is Alfred. <laughs> yeah. Alfred, uh, did that get you excited? <laughs> it did. My dad sent me um this thing from Disney or something that shows the the whole breakout of the Star Wars universe in order, and I was going to do the same thing, um, watching like you're doing. So I'll be I'll be shortly behind you because I want to go through awesome. all the um because I watched the Mandalorian and there's a lot of stuff in that show that comes up in the Rebels and and the Attack of the yeah, Clones yeah. and the Clone Wars and oh, I wonder the the lore in the background. So that's going to be fun. I'm, uh, I'm I'm definitely enjoying getting to know the universe a bit better. But yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know, yeah, I cannot talk about Star Wars intelligently, but I've watched them all. And I do sometimes sit down and just like zone into one and watch one, but I have not been watching the, am I going to pronounce this correctly? Man, man, Mandalorian. Yeah. I've not been watching that. So, but that's something that, is that only on Disney plus? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. That's one of the best things. That's one of the best things that come out of 2020. <laughs> wow. I've heard I mean, no one talk bad about it. Cause there's nothing wrong with it. That's what I'm talking about. You said that you said that with super confidence. You know what's yeah. funny? Yeah. We were all like in a group text like 90 minutes ago, being like, we're sad, we're depressed, we're tired. I know. Now we're all like now we're all like super pumped up. <laughs> I think that's a big thing. Um exactly. Once yeah. once I get in a room, we virtually are really with people. It's like something clicks, and there's something about the human contact that really turns things around. Yeah, and I I even have trouble sometimes getting excited, you know, not for this show, but excited to make that. The phone can feel heavy, and they talk about that like in early uh, addictions or with alcoholism, or if you're going through a problem, like the phone feels so heavy to call somebody, but also like this technology can sometimes feel like a burden, you know, yeah. plug in the microphone, turn on the stupid computer, mm -hmm. but once you connect with someone, it's just, it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. Alfred, what about, I kind of know what you did for New Year's, but I want to hear you talk about it for a couple minutes. What did you do for this year for New Year's? Uh, let's see. I played Call of Duty and I um, got ready and I went to the Pushies. And what's oh, the, yeah, the Pushies. I did that too. Yeah. What are the Pushies for the people listening that don't know? It's an award show for recognizing people from Bush Comedy Theater. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's performers and sets. I laughed so much. It was so good. It was real, really good. Oh so much. Yeah, I saw you put a couple comments in. I'm glad you watched. I logged on like right a couple minutes after six, but I'm so glad I did. And I went to the virtual out after party with Alfred to like quarter of midnight, like just because it felt so good to connect. It was only like maybe six or eight people, but just felt mm -hmm. so good to connect with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, Alfred, you won an award. I did. What did, what did you win? Tell us. Don't be bashful. The Outstanding Male Performer of the Year. I mean, that's awesome, Alfred. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to make you say it one more time. I'm probably going to make you blush when you say it. Tell, tell us, Alfred, say it with confidence. What did you win? <laughs> Outstanding male performer of the year. Hell yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Look how, look at how, I mean, could you have done that if you were still drinking Alfred and smoking your cigarettes and running around and hiding and doing all the things you did? No, I mean, I was talking <laughs> to one of my friends earlier today. It's like, I've, I've done more with um, alcohol, being a recovering alcoholic and Parkinson's, having dealing with Parkinson's than I did when I'm in my 20s when I was drinking. Didn't have a physical malady. Yeah, and probably, you know, openly battling other things, you know, anxiety or ADD mm -hmm. or depression oh, yeah. or, you know, but I mean, you are, you're super creative, you're very confident and you're a good writer, you're quick and you created some super cool things and then you're easy to work with. Like you can work with all sorts of people, you know. Mm. Um, did oh, did you? What about your parents? Did they did they watch or did you tell them about it? I told them they were like, whoa, they were really <laughs> excited. Uh, I feel like Tiffany. Did you get that award or you were nominated for something similar last year or two years ago? No, maybe two years ago. Okay, I feel like you were nominated. Okay, but you had a. I mean, I remember when you did the six 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 project. I even part of push anything years ago okay or maybe last year when you did the 666 i just remember you did so well i enjoyed watching you Thanks. you know um i had to work with both of you on stage and it's only been good yeah i think you all around yeah i was thinking about you a little bit tiffany this past week because i was thinking like when you and candace and i were going to do the three on three mm -hmm. you know and we got together like maybe once to get coffee then another time at makerspace and just being silly with you all and maybe that's a big thing too, to bring it back, like removing alcohol. Like, of course we could have been silly with alcohol, but us, we, we didn't know. It's funny. We didn't know each other when we were all drinking, but the things that I'm accomplishing now or not afraid to do, I couldn't have done when I was buzzing or drinking. Cause I took it too far. Yeah. Same. Um, and I think we wouldn't have vibed as well on stage. You know? I got sloppy. With yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid to see Alfred when he was straight. Yeah, we just wouldn't have vibed as well on stage and probably would have annoyed each other. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have made it on stage. Mm -hmm. No, no, yeah. I probably yeah. would have thrown up on the audience. Yeah, yeah, and just, and then maybe I would have left yeah. and just never came back. Yeah. You know? Um, man, well, hey, we do have a call-in number. I'm going to read it in case anyone anyone calls in. Um uh let me see it is one nine one seven four two six sixty seven ninety four nine one seven four two six sixty seven ninety four if you want to talk about the holiday blues or you know sober january or how to stop drinking or if you have any question about you know sobriety and creativity uh we're open to talk about that um have you picked up any other addictions, even silly ones, Alfred, you're comfortable talking about in the past, you know, 15 years or in the past 15 minutes? <laughs> um, I picked up. Good or bad? Good. Uh, learning the Celtic drum. I, I started learning how to play it and I got to get back to that because like during the pandemic, I was like picking some different things. That, oh, get some, kind of learn something. So it's a, it's a leather drum that you can play in like Celtic music and stuff and that and I've been doing getting back into my miniatures I paint miniatures and um I feel like you spend time messaging with some people and connecting on the phone like that's important mm -hmm. to you I've even received letter letters from you before like that's important to you yeah um I've been doing a lot of um I've made some new friends overseas I've been communicating with them and making friendships there and um uh are you going to church a couple of things are you going mm -hmm. to church at all i haven't gone in a while okay that's okay um and how are your pets doing they're doing extremely well i've got two of them are up three of them are sleeping so yeah. they're doing quite well now what about any any bad addictions i know you and i both joke about struggling with overeating or sweets like we'll yeah. easily gain 15 pounds and then i'll like yeah. lose three pounds and i'll i'll easily gain weight yeah i put on a few pounds um 
because eating is such a it's a I try to fill that um whatever you want to call it, the God says hole, the spiritual hole, the the lack of something that we desire that we think that we are what we need internally, but we're trying to fill it with those sort of things that don't fit the bill. Is that like when I get in my car three nights in a row and drive right to Dairy Queen drive through? <laughs> Yeah, with no yeah. shoes on, I'm like, oh, I might even get out of the car. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like I understand you know, that completely. Yeah, and so and I play this thing in my head where I justify it and it's okay, but sometimes like and it's like four nights in a row. I'm like, man, should I take a break? You know, mm. but um, uh, yeah, sweets is mine. Probably sweets, and then sometimes a new hobby if I get excited by something, maybe like improv or writing or painting or a TV show. I can just get obsessed and get lost for days. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I would say that in general, like we just have, we are the type to have the addictive personalities. So, yeah, I mean, I'll take an addiction to sweets over driving drunk and possibly hurting people. Mm-hmm. But, but it's, but it's an interesting thing to talk about because it, it just relates so much to how coping mechanisms are things that we all use. Mm-hmm. And so in this case, like overeating becomes the new coping mechanism. Right. I had a, I had sort of a, I had a realization about my alcohol, mm. uh, alcoholism. Do tell. For me, and I guess I kind of already knew it, but I, it, it just solidified it for me. For me, I haven't really had that many moments since I stopped drinking where I wanted to drink. Like I know some, you know, everybody has varying degrees of how much they're battling that monster that's like, take a drink, take a drink. Um, It wasn't until my cat died that really that I felt like getting another drink. Like it was the first time I really strongly felt that urge. So I, but, but at the same time, I was like, well, I, now I know what my, what my reasons for drinking, for coping, you know, it's, it's to deal with grief and sadness and, Depre- I'm trying to cure the depressed part of me, you know. Right. Uh, and or that's, that's what I used alcohol for. Um, but it was just so interesting f- to feel that feeling after so long. Um, and then also, it felt really great to feel that feeling, but it not have the power over me. Mm-hmm. I kind of just let it be, and then went about my day, which like just felt really nice too. I was proud of myself with that so uh that's really cool thank you for sharing that that's cool yeah. so that's going like three t- over two years pushing three years and then something happens and you're like shit i would not mind catching a buzz mm-hmm. um yeah i think too when i stopped drinking i was done and so it was kind of uh i was almost gagging i was almost like i'm done with this and so i wasn't like excited to drink i was more like how do I hurry up and clean up my life? Some financial things, anxiety. Um, so I wasn't as excited as drinking. And for a while I thought, um, hello. Uh, oh, do we got someone on the line? Yeah. Hello. hello. Uh, hey, you've Steven sober Steven Saturdays. Gavauer, Who is this? This is Stephen Gavauer. I'm hey, on. this is my <laughs> cousin, Stephen up in Washington, DC. Hey Steve. Welcome. Hi. Hey, hey, thanks for hey. calling, Stephen. Um, you can just say hello. You can ask any question. I don't know if you had a chance to listen or what's on your mind. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I was just um, listening to the beginning. Really interesting. And I've talked to to Jr. myself about you know just being inspired by some of the stuff that he shares online and um, you know caused some reflection for me. I feel like 2020 was actually a really great year for me in some ways to really reflect on um, many things, including um, alcohol consumption. Um, but yeah, I just appreciate every, the message that y'all are sending out and happy to call in and chat. <laughs> Thanks. You you said there was times that you maybe went, uh, you did like a sober month or like a sober weekend or you, you've done things like that. Like, haven't you before, Stephen? Yeah, that's right. Um, I've actually done in 2020, I had two months where I did separate one month um, full detox, which, which was really nice and actually kind of inspired, at least in my case, inspired different eating habits too. Um, I kind of changed my diet as well. So alcohol like became part of that, but it was really interesting for those months to 
um, <laughs> not have it be so automatic with if you're going out with friends, you're yeah. definitely having a drink or you're definitely, um, in, in my case, I, I actually went pescatarian. So I, I ate, I, now I'm eating fish and, um, you know, instead of uh, my normal diet. So that's, that's been a big change in 20, 2019, from 2019 to 2020. But the, the sober months actually felt great. I felt super clear and uh, on just like a high vibration at the end of that. That's cool. Uh, something we talk about, and uh, if you have a little bit more time, you can kind of listen. Something we talk about is, and maybe you can share with us, is we have to, so we stop drinking for a reason like, you know, diet or, you know, maybe we have a DUI or, you know, we're, we're, we're embarrassed, but then we have to like stay stopped for some sort of discipline reason, whether it's spiritual or a goal we've reached. So would you mind sharing like when you, when you, like the first day you just stop, but then after a while you have to like stay stopped. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, actually in my case, I went on like a, uh, kind of like a health and wellness retreat. Um, and they asked us leading up to the retreat to, to, um, stop, cut like a lot of things, alcohol, meat, dairy, coffee, which was a really, challenging one for me because I actually hadn't stopped drinking coffee in um, years, like five years. I, I think I pretty much had a cup a day, maybe once or twice missing, but uh, that one, um, meat as well. So it was just really interesting to just cut everything out. And then at that point, um, as far as what kept me going, I would say some things I reintroduced back in, but on the other hand, um, it just caused me to recognize some things as like an attachment. Coffee is one example, actually. I love coffee and I'm like, I'm actually kind of like battling the addiction right now because I haven't <laughs> had coffee for a while. But uh, I've also just, I've been really good without it. I feel like my energy levels are higher and to just kind of raise up to a, a, um, another level of looking at it and the only way that I could do that was to to uh, stop for a little while with alcohol I felt similar um, I have now had alcohol again but not uh, I feel like I'm much more mindful about the way that I would or wouldn't consume it and it's definitely not a uh, as much of a part of my life as, as it was previously yeah I like that word mindful or intentional you know, and not just like by habit. Yeah. Um, uh, that's super cool. I'm excited to connect with you, S Stephen. If uh, we can, you know, talk more tomorrow or this week, but um, uh, something else I think that just from you talking, like we, when we decide to be sober, even if it's just for a day or a week or a month or forever, like we have to create like routines, whether they're morning routines or mental routines or afternoon routines, like we have to create like a new routine. Um, and I'm sure you had to go through some of those things too. Yeah, that's been a big one for me, actually, especially journaling. Uh, journaling has like changed my life in 2020. It was really, that's awesome. I did feel, I know 2020 was so tough and challenging in so many ways. Um, for me with all the extra time at home, I did start some habits that, that I've stuck with and I will hope to stick with even as things pick back up to quote unquote normal. But uh, journaling has been a big one for me. So I just like write down things that I'm grateful for every morning, um, what I want to accomplish that day, and then some manifestation type stuff. And it's really powerful. It's, I can imagine, yeah, just like I want to be the healthiest, most vibrant version of myself. So writing that down on paper, it really triggers my brain to be like, this is what he wants. It's, I, I feel like it's an interesting way to communicate with your subconscious um, yeah. when you're writing stuff down. Uh, right on. I like everything that you're saying. Um, hey, thank you so much for calling in. We may, uh, I may let you go, but that's okay to allow the line for someone else. And then um, yeah, we, may, we may talk a little bit more about some of the things that you said. And then this will be downloaded and we release these. I can send it to you uh, as a podcast. Um, okay, great. and I also want to give a shout out that my friend Steven or my friend, my cousin Steven also has done improv 
I think in Pittsburgh and even overseas, he took a class. Um, so he's, uh, we have some creativity in the, in the genes and I'm excited to connect with him. <laughs> I appreciate that, John. Well, it's always great to talk to you and, uh, thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing awesome. Talk to you later. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. That was my cousin, Steven. We've been messaging a little bit, just some different things I've been pushing, putting on social media and realized that him and I had a lot in common. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't practice, you know, a life of sobriety, but he was very interested in what I was doing. And then he said that he himself had gone through like a month or two months, just like removing it from his life. And then he went through some changes. I think he got like a real estate license and he tried some different, you know, classes. And, you know, sometimes when you remove some of the things from those things from your life, you start to try new things. Mm -hmm. Um, Boy, I'm excited he called in. Thanks for listening. Did it make you guys think of anything? Yeah, um, I, I thought one of my daily readings is someone brought up this Emmett Fox. He's read a lot of spiritual literature. He, he read a book called The Seven Day Mental Diet. And it's basically a positivity challenge and it encourages you to think positively about your current life and ways to turn seemingly negative experiences and thoughts into positive ones. And really focusing on, you know, as soon as the negative thought comes in your head, you eject it and then focus on positive things for seven days. So, I think I'm going to read up on that and give that a try. It sounds interesting. It just, it's like we, we talk about all the trash and stuff we, we put in our bodies, but we also can load up our minds with a lot of garbage, too. Do you remember the golden key, Alfred? Yeah. Talk about that for a second. I remember uh, an old mentor, Sailor Bob, gave me the golden key. That's basically whenever your problem comes up, you immediately go back to focusing on God or your higher power. Yeah, and that says that your brain can't focus on two things at once. Mm-hmm. So if you think you have a problem, you focus on the golden key and whatever God is to you. If it's a uh, if it's a plate of cookies, if it's Santa Claus, mm-hmm. if it's you know yoga, if it's just you know riding a bicycle on a rainbow mm-hmm. cloud, you focus on something else besides your problem. What sounds so easy, but it's so damn hard. Yeah, and you know. So a lot focus. Of- Whatever I focus more on becomes the primary thing. Because you know if we drank and procrastinated, that problem is still there. And it just eats at us and eats at us. Um, that was cool that he talked about journaling as well. Um, mm-hmm. I like to write. I've been putting more of my writings public. I have some things I write privately. Are you writing at all, Tiffany? Are you busy these days? Like, Are you doing any writing for yourself? Or you're a good writer. You are a damn good writer. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I have not been writing, but I did have a conversation with someone today about starting a writing group. Ooh. ooh. So I may be writing again soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Boy, he, uh, that was just a nice call. I'm glad that he called in. Cousin Steven, right? He's, he's he's everything I wish I could be. Like, (laughs) like, he he was so intuitive about all of the things in his life that could be moderated. Um, as I'm sitting here drinking a cup of coffee, I just want to. I just I, for new sober people, I that are probably like me. Like I couldn't. I had to tackle one addiction at a time. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we- for me, it started with alcohol. Then I did cigarettes. I, I quit smoking cigarettes yeah. about year and a half later it took a bit but uh well we're all at different different places and it's just it just kind of re- just meeting different people reminds us of different things but yeah. uh i liked what he said about being the best version of himself and i think about that with myself i like to joke around a lot you know you all know me my friends know me that are listening but when i removed alcohol i'm now the best version of myself you know, and if, you know, so, you know, say Tiffany invites me to the writing group, I can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I was drinking, I may not be invited or I may say yes when I really mean no. Like Mm -hmm. I would have a lot of like miscommunication stuff or I can start my own group, you know. (laughs) Um, But uh, before I think when I was drinking, I had my emotions were up and down and I would procrastinate things and I had this idea of always like tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow I'll do it. And yeah. we were all still pretty creative. You know, we finished school and did some military obligations and had relationships, but um, you, you, I'm sure Tiffany, you probably feel so much more hopeful now. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
you know, I just know from things you share about like the future, different places you could go or. Because you know. I, I feel like I have opportunity now before it would every day just felt like a dead end, which is why I mm -hmm. wanted to drink. Cause then at least it felt different, you know? Um, but yeah, everything's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying life now. I, I am actually living life now. <laughs> so opportunity. I like that. I think about that a lot too is I look things now, at now as opportunities and um, maybe not things so much happening to me, but maybe things happening for me or things mm -hmm. happening in front of me that I can decide to join or back away from or encourage. But I look at things as opportunities. Um, is that you? I saw you nodding your head to that, Alfred. Does it, you think? Yeah, I think so. Have you been? Because like when I was drinking, it was just... I think, oh, I'll be really creative. I want to paint and get loaded and get really creative. But then I've I had so many half finished projects. That I... Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And I still have half finished projects now, but there's less of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And also, I don't. Shout out to Candace for the best word ever: accountability buddies. Oh, oh that's awesome. Is that her that wrote that? Okay, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Accountability buddies. Oh my gosh accountability buddies oh my gosh that sounds like a teletubby that's accountable um, like, um candace what is it you know her <laughs> her podcast or her game what is it candace is it? yeah candace candace i would want to be in your top five accountability buddies i would pay i would pay monthly to be in candace's accountability buddy group <laughs> <laughs> for, for awesome. patreon being the top five yeah right? uh she makes me laugh she's funny um Oh man. Um, I know we, I know you, I don't want to talk too much about feeling down in the dumps, but I know uh, we probably all had a little bit of holiday depression or blues mm -hmm. or overeating. Um, do you let yourself linger in that a little bit or do you try to find something to reach out? I have to reach out. Like today I caught myself. I was laying in bed for no reason. I got to get the fuck out of bed. Because <laughs> I know where that takes me. Yeah. I did, I did about two days of laying in bed on and off, but, um, so even the other day I took two showers within a couple hours. Cause that, mm. that was like something just to do to like, wake me up, you know? Mm. Um, how about you, Tiffany? I'm a sensitive baby. And <laughs> I, I mean, like I cry all the time. So when I'm sad, like I have to feel it. I have to go through it. I have to sob it out. It just, it's, it's, it's a thing and I just got to do it. And then, and then I, I'm, I'm not scared of those emotions anymore. I'm not scared to feel them. No, um, the sometimes I, I, sometimes it's too much. And then yes, I reach out, but, but I'm not scared to feel them or, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I have to numb them as much because they're temporary anyway. Right. All, all emotions are temporary. I like that. Mm. Yeah. You know, go through. You just made me think about something, Tiffany. I think sometimes when I was feeling something, I felt like right away I had to contact somebody while I was in that feeling to let them know. But now I understand I can go through some of these things alone and then maybe tell someone later on like what I did to calm down or relax or to let go. But there might have been times when I was in that chaos or in that feeling, I had to call somebody in that feeling. Right. Yes, but I don't think I do that as much now. I work through it on my own with some tools. Um, I'm well, big on I'm big on I have to change my environment. So sometimes it's just like walking out the front door. You know, I'm big on I have to change my environment. Today I went to Home Depot. I was like, I gotta get out of the house. I gotta do something different. Okay, that's cool. Just to walk around. Well, I needed some trays for storing some stuff, and I was putting it off. And then I went to Michael's, and there was a zoo. <laughs> it just like everything was a mess there's a lot of people in there and then i went to home depot and they had what i wanted but it just felt good to be out and just be around people yeah i wonder if there's anyone out there listening that wants to share with us um you know is there uh you know do you sometimes you know the feeling of procrastination or you know laying in bed when you get out and get down in the dumps you know do you like someone to check on you and hold you accountable or do you have it inside of yourself to reach out to someone? Um, you know, is there a story that you could share, you know, maybe in, in the past week or year, or is there something you want us to talk about? You know, I know we have thousands of people listening. Um, 
there was a, a, a guy I used to listen to at the bars in State College, Pennsylvania, John Somebody, and he had a song about procrastination. I used to love it when he'd play the song Procrastination. I was like, this is my jam. I loved it. Hmm. I remember he'd play on Sunday nights, and I had some friends that were like, no, I got to do schoolwork. I'm like, dude, come on, Sunday night, you know? Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like I'd go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> but I remember he'd always play this song Procrastination. Yeah. Um, it's funny how you know that doesn't even really sound that exciting to me anymore. <laughs> so we, our friend said, avoiding those feelings is a huge part of why I drank for a while. Totally feel that, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, but then it just for me, it just it just stopped working, and I just couldn't be the best person I I, I wanted to be. You know, it just it just stopped working after a while. John, it looks like we have a call. Oh. Yeah. oh. Do we have a call? Hello, this is uh, John, Tiffany, and Alfred on Sober Saturdays. Hung up. Oh, That's know. okay. That's okay. Um, I, I have a question for the audience too. We shared what we did for New Year's Eve. I would love to know what some other people did. Thank you. Because maybe you'll get some good ideas. I don't know. Yeah, what did you do on New Year's Eve? Or maybe like, what did you wish you did? Have you ever gone out before, but like not really wanted to, you know, or maybe you had a great New Year's Eve. I definitely have been co coerced into things years and years ago that I didn't want to do, or I felt like I couldn't say no. And this is the funniest person of all time. Uh, Candace, if you're out there, you can call in. We have, we have a call. It is things with your voice. Hello, this is John. So we're Saturdays. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, hey, I didn't know. I didn't hear anybody. I didn't know if anybody could hear me. Oh. We can um, hear you loud and clear. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. One thing that uh, made me uh, think about uh, something else was what, uh, what Tiffany was saying about how she knows herself and she knows that she has to have a period of time where she just lets those emotions exist. And mm. then you were asking about, yeah. And then you're asking about um, like, what should people do? Should they come and get you? Should they do they like you to pull you out of it? And like, for me, if I'm in a depressed place or in the past and I've had uh, trouble with things, I think the thing that I've responded to, at least for me, and I, I imagine other people might be the same, is the people that know you know to give you a little bit of space where it's like you let someone sort of be with themselves for a while. Maybe it's a couple hours if it's a small thing or something else, then you go check on them. Maybe it's they're going to take a couple of days, but then you go check on them. And I think that's the thing where it's a balance where you sort of, you let someone know that you're still there without demanding that they feel better. Like right now, be on your timetable. Uh, I think that's a way of really maintaining trust and not alienating people, which can be tough too, because you get to extreme situations and you might have to show up with someone and say, Hey, you can't go on like this, but you have to be very careful about when you use those moments. In their own time, I, I, I like what you said about timetable, Bobby. In their own time, or uh, I like that. Yeah, um, I mean that's the thing where yeah, I think that's a it's something that it's a very difficult thing to do where you acknowledge that you can't just fix someone and you can't just make them better. You sort of have to create a space where they feel like they can become better and mm. it's still up to them. It's still up to them to do it. Uh, so that's just, uh, I thought about that when uh, Tiffany mentioned, you know, her sort of, you know, self-awareness and I, I find that to that. be very, um, you know, space where they can get better. That's beautiful. I love that. Create the space. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that is good. Um, so there's this writing group. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes maybe struggle with, uh, don't struggle with, but you know, I maybe want things to happen in my own time quickly. I'm impatient, um, instant gratification. 
uh, for myself and for my friends. Uh, I do like to check on people. I probably try not to overdo it. I never want to be pushy or unbearable, but I like what you said about create the space um, and maybe just allow, and, and you know, if you're in an intimate relationship with someone, or if you're just in a relationship with them, just to create that space and just check on them. So they know that you're there. Um, but sometimes you do have to give them a kick in the butt. Um, that's good. Uh, just to reflect on that a little bit, Bobby, that's really good. Thank you for calling. Thanks for listening. Oh, you're, you're, good support. Well. you're a really yeah, good yeah, supporter no. and a good friend. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Don. I really appreciate, um, uh, which I'll have going here. I think it's very valuable. And I, I commend you on um, uh, being brave enough to, to, to put this on and to put yourselves out there and to give people exactly what you're doing is exactly that though. You're creating, you've given people a space where they can, yeah. in their own time, they can call up. <laughs> even think about that. Yeah. Bobby, I'm yeah. doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> you're doing it, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll let, yeah. I'll let y'all go and have a, have a good rest of your night. Awesome. Thanks, you thank too. You. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, wow. Yeah, it's important to um, allow people, because like some of the things they want to go in and fix it. I'm an empath. I'm an INFP, and I just want to go in. Yes. And people are hurting. I want to I want to render first aid and get them to the hospital. You know, not literally, but figuratively. But, but then it's, just, it's hard for me to just let people go have their experience. And sometimes people just want to share what they're going through. They don't want a solution. They just need to get it out. And, yeah. um, and to have the time to process whatever you're going through is, um, um, it, it's, it's, I had a friend of mine who talked me out of the house a couple of days a week because I was so more depressed. I couldn't get moving. So, um, um, it's good to have people there who, who will check in on you. And, um, and then I have people that I'll reach out to because when I'm in the dumps, I don't like to tell everybody, but I like to tell a few key people. And I have to be honest with at least one person when I'm in it, because if I don't, and I say, well, I don't need to share because I've been around for it was sober so long. And but people need to hear that we go through hard times and stay sober. I think that's one of the, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I tell, I tell people too much like on social media and stuff. I'm constantly talking about depression and mental health and things like that via my Instagram story or TikToks or whatever. Um, and it's, so I guess in the sense that that is my way of reaching out, uh, just sort of sharing the experience, just being open about it. Uh, and that's been really helpful. I forget why I went there. Um, I think that's okay. Uh, for you, I'm going to play on that a little bit. When I share how I'm feeling or I write something or I put something, it's when I, and when I put it out, it releases it. And then, and I also know and hope somebody will connect with it, but often if they reach out to me or I talk with someone about it, I'm already past mm -hmm. maybe that feeling. I'm not wallowing in it 24 hours later or six hours. You know, when I put it out there, it's kind of like I'm done with it in a sense. Um, it's hard for me to keep things in too. I, I keep some things in, but I like to share. Yeah. Um, no, Tiffany, I think that, I think you help, it helps people. And it shows them where you're at. And I think, uh, as as our caller said, creating space or letting pe it's I think it's creating a space for someone too. Like, hey, here's someone I know and can relate to. This is something she's sharing where she's at. Um, I, I think, think it's okay. I, think I do that too because that's the same. That's the same way that I got sober. For me, I created a second Instagram account and only followed accounts that had to do with sobriety or about sober celebrities or about mental health and just really focused on that. So I think I'm kind of just piggybacking off of how I was able to get myself to a place without alcohol and just sort of continuing that process since it did help me. You're, you're giving back in a sense, I guess. Oh, I guess. Yeah. You yeah. You're kind of creating that for someone else. Uh, that be celebrities. Say it again. So celebrities. Sober, <laughs> sober celebrities. Uh, someone just shared with me in a message this week that Anthony Hopkins has forty-five years sobriety. Yeah, Jim Carrey, Tom Hardy. Um, I can't think of any women right now. What's that one girl? The blonde girl that was in Gossip Girl. Blake Lively. So, not there. It took me. A I second. think. I think Drew Barrymore has been sober for like over twenty years. <laughs> love her I hope yeah um, yeah i love drew barrymore um 
yeah, I, I think I do, you know, maybe we all have a little bit of a, of an ego where you like to share, but I was taught early on if I wanted to get healthy and get past. Okay. So I was taught very early on when I stopped drinking that if I want to get healthy and pass this anxiety and procrastination, then I need to share out loud sober where I'm at, what I'm going through and that it will help others. It'll help me and it works. And so is it ego driven? Is it creating space? I think it's just letting people know this is something, you know, I don't, you know, I don't like to talk about it all the, sometimes I try to relate to people by talking about the stories. Oh, a DUI, or I climbed on the roof, or I went to this concert, mm-hmm. or I drove to Chicago. But, uh, you know, really, I like to talk about some of the other things or the solution. Um, and then I hope to be able to be, and it has been, to be a listening ear for someone or to be a sober ride home. I love it if someone calls me and I can give them a sober ride home. Um, Sounds like we all have our versions of an accountability. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, if anyone else, else is out there listening, um, I see someone did put in the chat. What did she say? She likes to stay home on New Year's Eve anyway. Um, that's a friend of mine, a friend of ours. I think she might've celebrated six months and that's okay. Cause you don't have to feel like you have to go out on New Year's Eve, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I <laughs> but I like think I felt like I used to always have to go out on New Year's Eve. Yes. And I don't even know if I had a good time. <laughs> I would start drinking like December 30th. Hmm. And I used to really like to drink on uh, the first, like wake up and just mm. drink. You know, but yeah, it was like, I didn't really have a good time on the 31st. Um, I felt hungover on the first, Yeah, but I think I was just really dehydrated and crashing from these Ghirardelli squares left over. From- uh, oh, this year on the first. Yeah. Yeah. I felt, uh, I was like chocolate cake hungover. If that yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like waking up with a chocolate cake in my bed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Alfred, do you have a little bit of a sweet tooth as well? I do. Now, do you like to cook at all? Have you learned to, to cook at all in sobriety? Um, yeah, I don't do it much, but I, I know how to do th- cook things. Okay, s'mores in the microwave? No, I'm just yeah. joking. I don't think it, um, those aren't that hard, but I don't, I don't think to make them. It's like, all of a sudden, oh, they're good to have, and then you yeah. forget about them. Uh, last year, Alfred and I tried to create some space with some other friends, uh, down at the 757 makerspace. I had a great time. We, uh, made a bonfire and just talked, Mm -hmm. uh, and I appreciate you came all the way down there and we made like two new friends, three, maybe. you know? And we had a UAV that was flying around taking the videos. Yeah. A guy had a drone flying around. So that was a cool new year's Eve. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I appreciate it, Alfred. You've always been supportive of me. Like, I had an idea, and you came all the way down there. I appreciate that. Um, is anyone else out there listening that has a uh, uh, gone through the holiday blues or maybe procrast- procrastinating something or has a question about uh, alcohol or sobriety? Um, we're open to a call in or open to anyone that wants to put anything in the chat. We have some people monitoring the chat for us. We have some people just kind of commenting. I heard someone share today, um, for the New Year's, they don't set resolutions, they set goals, because resolutions are pretty absolute, but goals you can work towards, and I, I like that. And it's almost like um, Tiffany was alluding to earlier, we got sober, so we want to fix everything at once, but maybe we should just focus on a few things and keep it simple and overcome a couple of things, because then... And I get overwhelmed. It's like, I don't need to go to the gym and work out for five hours. I can just do five push-ups, and the next day I do six and just build small and, and grow because it's like, if I can't make it achievable, then I'm not probably going to do it. Can I piggyback off of that? I heard the good. genius yeah. thing about, um, about setting goals for your day where let's say your goal is to go on a run, but you know, tomorrow. Well, instead of that being resolute like that, like, you know, if I don't go on a two mile run tomorrow, that means I'm a failure. Instead, what you do is you set up a green, yellow and red goal. 
that are all related, but if you wake yeah. up the next day and you're having a really bad day, like you can just tell, then you go to your red, which might be instead of walk, doing a two mile run, you just walk to the end of the driveway and back. I but love that, it. That's your red day goal. But hey, let's say you're feeling like kind of okay, do your yellow, maybe you only, you go for like a mile walk. But then if you're having a great day, then you do the green goal, but you, you set yourself up for success no matter what. And you're really forgiving with yourself, depending on how you're feeling that day. I just thought that was brilliant and wanted to share. So thanks. for no, I love that. Uh, I love, I want, I want to talk through that a little bit. What does that make you think of Alfred? I really like that idea. This thing of, um, basic advantage. It's like, um, not ability levels. It's more like, um, listening, being in tune with your body and knowing you need to do something, but working towards something instead of like having this. It's okay oh, for thoughts and ideas change, you know. We have a call. Oh. Hello, you're on Sober Saturdays. Yo, what up, Sober Saturdays? Um, this is Darrell Clark calling hey. from my Whoa. bedroom. Hey, Darrell, <laughs> how you doing, my man? Thank you for calling. Yeah, yo, for sure. I uh, almost forgot about can I is it do I gotta uh keep this PG or can I just go in? Speak from the speak from the heart. Word. Okay. I almost forgot about this shit because like uh I don't know. I was all chatting with a friend earlier in the last track of time, but like it was all cool and I was just like, Oh damn. Uh I saw what time it was. So here I am. Thank you. <laughs> Did you get to listen to anything we said so far or not? That's okay. I have no idea what the fuck y'all are talking about. All right. Well, is it okay if we name who you are? Like, you know, you're okay if we say your name? You already did. You're okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spill it. All right. Hey, so this is our friend, uh, Darrell Clark. Um, Tiffany, I know you, 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 we all met at uh, Stella a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so Alfred, you remember he came last year to our New Year's Eve. I remember that. Was, yeah, I yeah. Weird. So uh, uh, Darrell, so Tiffany, Alfred, and I have been doing this the first first saturday at 8 p.m and i'd like to have you on more involved if you'd like uh this is maybe our fourth yeah, one that's great um, okay. and, uh, and so tiffany just celebrated her third new year's eve sober how about yourself hey snaps congratulations <laughs> tiffany. new year's eve no drinks i know it feels good uh, how about you what did you do on new year's eve you you have over a year now don't you yeah, uh, it'll be this month will make 17 months. It's like my wow, little baby. That's awesome. That's, that's so cool. Little baby, little baby sobriety. Sobriety. Cause, hey. Cause you were drinking in the mornings a long time ago. So was yeah. I. So was I. <laughs> and playing like that guitar and thinking you were going places when you were drinking at 11 a.m. <laughs> I was going places. Right? I know. I was, yeah. I'm just being goofy with you. Um, What did you do for New yeah, Year's? Um, yo, New Year's Eve, I, I sat in my room and I was, um, Spotify has this thing now where you can like have like listening sessions with other people. So like okay. I was with two of my, two of my homegirls and we were just, we were just playing, picking songs and had, we just had like a New Year's Eve playlist and we, I, I, I was at the crib, they was, they was at their crib and we just we just played songs <laughs> over yeah. on this like shared little group playlist thing. That sounds so magical. Yeah, well, it was. It was. Great, it yeah, was this a lot of fun. People to share because that's the, I'm gonna steal that idea for a, a future New Year's. It's so cool. I, I didn't know you could do that. Do it. I didn't yeah. know it was a thing either, but like you can like pretty much just invite you know some friends that have Spotify accounts to have a listening session and like they can take a song to play you can pick one like whatever like it's it's pretty sweet and we're gonna like think about we're thinking about using that to like listen to the podcast together and like you know take separate notes and then you know come back to it no it's, yeah. it's pretty tight do you have anything new are you right are you writing at all or any new music coming out i know you had a big year not a big year last year but i know you had some things come out last year yeah yeah last year was a. Uh, yeah, it was, whew, last year was interesting. Um, yeah, the EP came out, it's almost a, almost a year ago. It'll be, so yeah, January 11th will make one year for the, 
my uh, EP, the In Between Times EP. Share the um, share where share where people can find it and the music name. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just my name, D A R I E L Clark. Um, Bandcamp, Spotify, Apple Music, Title, all that shit, and then like Facebook page, uh, et cetera. Um, but yeah. So like, as far as right now, I've I've been doing some writing and uh, just figuring out how to get this next uh, thing done. I've, been, I've just been a lot on my mind. Has um, anything happened? So Tiffany shared her cat passed away about 30 days ago it was the first time she felt like drinking. Has anything hit you hard and emotion just, just sneak up and slap you and you felt like catching a buzz? Fuck yeah. It was, uh, it was this holiday season because it reminded me of uh, four years ago when my post office got the Amazon contract when it finally hit and all I was doing was just working. Like I had no time for anything else. I mean, like averaging like 10 to 14 hour days every day. There was a point where I worked like 24, 27 days in a row oh, like that, even much. Sundays, like it was brutal. And like, I had no time to do anything, but go to work. And then when I got off of work, I didn't have no time to go get groceries or cook. So I went to a bar and grill, bourbon and gingers, whatever food I was drink, or eating at the time. And then, like, if I felt froggy enough, I'd make a phone call or two, meet up with some folks, and then keep it rolling. And, yeah, it just was a, it was a period of time for, like, from, like, late November of 2016 into February where, like, my intake just ramped up in a major way. And then in it just kept slowly just going up over time. And then, um, yeah. So, uh, and then things progressed from there, but, um, yeah. So back in like midway through last month, it was just a very, I had a very, uh, rough, uh, patch where like just the days were so, so reminiscent of that time. And it was just fucking me up. And I was just like, super thirsty like just visualizing <laughs> it all you know yeah like the, uh, and, and it just it took a lot to to be like no no because you know the outcome of that so no don't do that shit like it just it took a lot of like so much visualizing the outcome myself, can be bad psyching myself out of psyching myself out huh yeah almost so you can visualize it then you have to visualize the bad outcome <laughs> yeah exactly like I visualized like it going into the glass and I visualized, okay, that's going to cost a lot of money in the long run. And then I'm going to have to drive. And then like, you know, all these things. And it was just like, it was just like a fucking like rewind play, you know, like, like play the whole thing out. And then like rewind, it was just like, I got to go through this scenario and then it would come back like, nah, but think about how good it would feel. And then I had to run through it all again. It was just like, it was an exercise and that shit was exhausting after a while. Well, uh, I'm glad you made it through it, Tiff. Thank you. So you too. And our, another friend of ours went their first New Year's without a drink also. Yeah. Uh, huh. Kelsey, I want to make sure I'm not pronouncing her name wrong or her last name wrong. Kelsey. Oh, help me with that. Hawk That's Hawk okay. Helter, yeah. Um, I really like her. She's got a super cool uh, vi vibe. Uh, I think she does uh, massage and uh, she does some other, um, uh, just some other very creative things. And I like the way she expresses herself with her hair color. And um, I don't know, we've been in some very uh, just positive messages. So I'm glad that she's listening. Thank you. She's um, six Nice. Congrats to you too, Kelsey. Yeah. Um, uh, Darrell, I'd like to connect with you again. Uh, thank you for calling in. Um, this will be released as a podcast, so I can send you, the, send you the link. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry I haven't haven't been so, like, available. I've been... That's last, okay. Oh, that's a lot I got to catch up with you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen some things they've been posting and writing, and uh, definitely we've known each other. So we've known each other before for a long time, but um, I'm gonna see here if this young woman, Kelsey, is gonna call in or she just wants us to give her a shout out. Is it okay if we let you go? Cause we're gonna wrap up here in a couple minutes. 
Yeah, I got shit to do anyway, so. <laughs> hey, but it's really good to hear your voice. Thank no, you for calling me. Don't, yeah, don't, what do you, what do you do? don't make stuff up now. Come on now. <laughs> uh, hear from you. Yeah, um, that was really cool. I was messaging with him today. Um, that's really cool. He is a super good writer. He was involved at the uh, uh, 35th Street venue for a while. He's come to watch me at Improv early on. And um, I was friends with him and his family, uh, or excuse me, him and another family that we have in common years ago, and then we just reconnected. Um, so Kelsey said that was her first New Year's without a drink, and the holidays are a trigger. Word, we understand yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Post-holidays are a trigger, too, because we're going from all that hubbub of activity, and we're transitioning back into real time. Yeah, is... I don't know if she's still comfortable uh, messaging in or if she wants to call in, but the holiday is a trigger family or stress um, pro- pro- or, or just both, you know, you, sometimes you feel like you, you should be drinking. I think we're going to have to keep that. We'll talk about that next time for sure. Oh no. Uh, we're getting the old uh, John Wharton wants to add two more um, <laughs> top topics with 90 seconds left. So I'm like the person it's like hard to get to the party, but once I'm there, like it's hard to leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um that's why Matt's the best producer. Yeah, yeah. Uh hey, this I just want to say uh thank you, Kelsey. We didn't forget about you. Thank you for listening. Uh yes, the holidays can be a trigger. Um, we have a couple uh you, you know, we have, this is the thing right now, our fifth episode that we're gonna download as a podcast, Sober Saturdays. Mm. Um do you all want to keep doing this? You know, one, just yeah. want to keep rolling with it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it. we're meeting new people every time and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, me too. Um, and so, if you'd like to share your ideas or what you've done that we couldn't get to do on the phone, email us at sober Saturdays 757 at gmail.com. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So we have an email out there, sober Saturdays 757 at gmail.com. I launched a Facebook page today, and then all of us are very active on social media. And uh, we'd like to just keep this going the first Saturday of every month. Yep. So we'll see you. Uh, in yep. What All is right. It? February 6th at 8 p.m. Sounds wonderful. February 6th, 8 p.m. All right. Well, thank you to Tiffany and Alfred and to our producer, uh, Matt Cole with Earprov. Uh, my name is John and we're signing off. Stay sober, everyone. You're worth it.